I read all 10 of Neville Goddard's books and not only did I read them, but I studied them, implemented them, and I even summarized them on my channel. Now, Neville Goddard, he's a famous mystic and philosopher, and he really popularized a lot of ancient concepts because simply put, his methods work. And people who really implement the techniques, they see the results. And Neville Goddard actually sources his wisdom from the ancient teachings of Kabbalah, which is an ancient mysticism that decodes the Old Testament. And this is something that I've been studying my whole life actually as well, because my parents studied Kabbalah since I was born. So I was kind of like grown up into learning the wisdom of Kabbalah. What I love about Neville's work is that he really simplifies some of the most important concepts and things that we can practically take in order to manifest things in our reality and create real lasting change in our lives. What I found after reading all 10 of his books is that he has a couple core foundational teachings that he kind of repeats over and over again. And while there are so many good concepts, so many good quotes in his books, our minds can really only focus on so many different concepts at once. So in this video, I want to share with you the one quote that I believe hands down is truly the most important concept that Neville shares that has completely changed my life and it will change yours too. Keep on watching. Hey fam, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Rahosa, and on this channel, I am here to remind you of the creative power that lives within you. I believe that we were created to create the best world possible, and that begins with us first creating the best world possible for ourselves. So that way we have that full cup energy to bring to the people around us and to the world. If you are interested in topics on manifestation, spirituality, self-development, success, and expressing your creativity with the world, then this channel is going to be your best friend. Make sure to give this video a like, leave me a comment on what you find most valuable in this video, and subscribe to the channel. Okay, so I am not going to keep you guys waiting any longer. I got the quote pulled up on the screen. I'm going to read it for you and then I'm going to break it down so that it's super clear, super concise, super simple, and you can actually take practical steps in changing your reality after hearing what I have to say. Actually, I'm going to grab the mic for this one so you can hear it nice and crisp. <laughs> so this quote is from his book, The Power of Awareness. I'm going to read it and then I'm gonna break it down, don't you worry. The quote is, the great secret is a controlled imagination and a well-sustained attention firmly and repeatedly focused on the feeling of the wish fulfilled until it fills the mind and crowds all other ideas out of consciousness. So quite a few points packed into this one quote. I'm gonna break it down into three points for you so you can walk away with some real powerful takeaways from this video. So the first point that I want to address is when he says, the great secret is a controlled imagination and a well-sustained attention. So let's talk about those key words, controlled imagination and sustained attention. What he's referring to here is number one, your imagination, your ability to see a future for yourself that is different than your current reality or what has happened in the past for you. The only way that you can envision a future is to use the power of your imagination, number one. And number two, a sustained attention. What he means by sustained attention is your ability to focus. Simply put, you cannot be the creator of your reality if you do not control your focus. Done. I could end this video right off here if you truly understood the power in that statement. Our focus is the greatest skill that we can develop. In fact, it's no coincidence that it's the thing that so many people in today's society have a struggle with. It's no coincidence that so many more people are diagnosed with ADHD. This is how our ego or the negative side, whatever you want to call this force that exists in this world in order to bring us away from the light, away from our purpose. This is how it gets us. It gets us because it has control of our focus. 
when we can control where our focus is at all times, we become the absolute master manifestors, creators of our reality. If we're not in control of our focus, then every single thing in the external world is controlling our focus, being programmed and just feeding into the program subconsciously. If we're not in control of our thinking, then we are not autonomous thinkers and we're basically just robots at this point. And we all have a robotic side to us. And I'm actually reading the book Psycho Cybernetics right now. And in the beginning of the book, he says that the human being is not a machine, but we all have machines inside of us. And that machine is our subconscious mind, but it's our responsibility and it's in our control and our power to be able to control the machine to the best of our ability so that the machine does not control us. We want to take back that operant power, the operator power of the machine and choose where we're putting our focus into so that the machine isn't just completely controlling us. It is so, so important that if you get nothing else from this video, but taking away the importance of keeping a controlled focus, then so be it. But sh truly take time to develop and strengthen that muscle because that is literally what it is. It's like training the muscle of your brain because our attention is stretched in so many different directions, we must exercise the muscle of keeping our attention, keeping our focus on, on what? The life we wanna create, on our desires, on positive thinking, and even dedicating time to completely cease from thinking, right? Like, I want you to challenge yourself, maybe you already do this, maybe you don't, but regardless, I want you to challenge yourself on your level, whatever level you are at on your journey of mindfulness and focus and put yourself in a state of meditation and practice just ignoring your thoughts and practice keeping your focus on one singular thing, whether that's the music that's playing in the meditation, or maybe it's your breath, or maybe it's a point on the ceiling, whatever it is that you choose to do, challenge yourself to keep your focus on one thing at a time. And then when thoughts pop up, which they will, because our brains just keep going and we're so used to the distractions that it actually takes a lot of effort to keep our focus in one place. It's okay if the monkey mind keeps going off, but it is our responsibility to be able to just observe it, recognize it and bring ourselves back. And that is how you strengthen your focus. You're gonna see how hard it is, especially if you've never done this before. Please don't be that person that says, oh my God, I'm bad at meditating. I'm not, I can't meditate, I'm bad at it. Everybody starts off being bad at it until you put awareness, until you make the decision that you want to control your focus, then you can develop it as a skill. It's a skill, right? No one's born a master manifester. Okay, maybe there are, there are some uh, exceptions to this, but like anything else, it's a skill that you develop. So yeah, you're probably gonna be shit the first couple times that you do this. The first couple times that you really focus your mind and attention, your mind's gonna wanna do absolutely anything else and wander to this and to what I have to do tomorrow and to what I did yesterday and how I should have said this instead of that and our brains are gonna go off. It's our responsibility to practice bringing our focus in the right direction. It's like doing a workout, but a workout for your brain, which is the best kind of workout. Why? Because if we can control our minds, then we can control our reality. When you have this skill, you can easily master your fate. And I'm going to talk more about this as I go on with the quote. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, okay, focus attention, got it, got to keep my focus, but what is it that I should be focused on? So this brings us to the second point that he mentions in the quote, which is where he says, focused on the feeling of the wish fulfilled, meaning you have a desire. There's something that you want, a reality, an ideal life you want to create. Maybe you have a general idea what that life looks like. Maybe you know it in perfect detail. Whatever the case is, you have a general ideal image of what you see for your future, for your life. So what it means to focus on the feeling of the wish fulfilled means focus on feeling like your dream life is happening right now. You can't focus on feeling your dream life happening now if you don't first develop the skill of keeping a focused attention. That's why that's number one. So focus on the wish fulfilled. Focus on the things you want to call into your life, the feelings you want to have. If you're everything in your life were exactly the way that you wanted it to be. If you were in the dream body, if you did have the dream career, if you did have the dream partner, if you were living in your healthiest, most aligned life. 
the more you focus on that reality rather than the old story or the cycles and the thoughts that you're currently repeating to yourself, the more the things that you don't want and the way that you currently think and your past limitations and all the excuses that you create as to why you cannot reach those goals, they naturally dissipate. Because think about this, our minds can only focus on one thing at a time. So if we are constantly and only focused on the life that we're creating, and we spend so much time mentally in the life that we're creating over here, then we don't have time even to focus on and think and ruminate on all, all the bad shit, all the limitations that we have, all the negativity that is in our life. Because if we're so focused on the positive, we're so focused on all the good and we're continuously redirecting our thoughts to the good and to the life that we desire and to working towards our goals and to infiltrating our mind and, and our emotional state with the feeling of already having our desires, then where is there time to focus on the, our lack, our limitations, the things that are bothering us? If something happens that bothers us, okay, it's, it's another story. I want to be clear about this, okay? A lot of people put an emphasis on healing, doing shadow work, uncovering our deepest, darkest limitations and limiting beliefs before we can even focus on manifesting for our future, which is actually very, very necessary. We do need to have those points in time where we are digging things up when it feels necessary to, because only by bringing it up, that's how we gain the awareness that we need of, of where we're currently at, what level are we currently at, but not for the purpose of staying stuck in that level. And I think this is where people go either too far on either side of the spectrum, either too much in the positive and redirecting that they ignore their shadow, they ignore their negativity, or they bring up so much negativity, they do so much shadow work that they stay stuck in that negativity because they aren't then flipping it over to shifting their focus to the positive. So we need to find a balance. We need to have the awareness of what is not an alignment in our life so that we can evolve and we can change. The problem is that we don't want to get stuck in that low state because what's happening is we're perpetuating an old story again and again and again. And that's where we're keeping our focus because when we bring things up in order to be healed, that's great. It's beautiful. We should look at things that need to be healed, but we don't want to constantly bring our focus back to the things that need to be healed because what does that do? It creates more of things that need to be healed because that's where our focus is constantly going and feeding into is things needing to be healed. There must come a point where we must take that initiative to shift our state, to shift our primary focus out of our limitations, out of the lack, out of the negativity and into the state of the wish fulfilled, into our desires, into the new story that we're creating for ourselves. Let's say you're trying to call in wealth and abundance. Wealth and abundance needs to be your focus, not the lack of wealth right? Your focus shouldn't be on how it's so hard for you to make money or in the past X, Y, Z things happened to you. And that's why you are in the position you're in and all those stories, can they come up and can you look at them and can you work on them so that you can gain awareness on your current level where you're at right now? Yeah, you should, you should have that initial awareness. But as soon as you gain the awareness, you must make a decision that that is not where you want your focus to be in. Unless you want to continue perpetuating that reality, then sure, keep your focus and attention in that area. But if you want to shift to a new reality, a new destiny, a new timeline, then keep your focus in only the things that you're calling in. Then continuously make that effort to put your focus in the things that you desire to call in. The third point that I want to emphasize from this quote is where he says firmly and repeatedly focus on the wish fulfilled until it fills the mind and crowds out all other ideas out of consciousness. Okay. So he doesn't just say do this once, you know, put your focus and your desires once and you're done. No, he says firmly and repeatedly put your attention and your focus into the new state, into your desired state. But that's not even all it's saying. It's not even just saying to persist. It's saying persist and don't stop until it completely fills your mind and it crowds out all other ideas and all other limitations. Like I said, if you're so focused on the life you're creating, you don't even have space. It, it fills up your mind that you don't even have space for the limitations. Your consciousness is only as strong as your persistent and consistent thoughts that are recycling over and over again in your mind. So 
to conclude, I'm going to read the quote one more time for you just so you can like put all the pieces together now, now that I brought some of these points even more into your focus. Okay, the quote is, the great secret is a controlled imagination and a well-sustained attention, firmly and repeatedly focused on the feeling of the wish fulfilled until it fills your mind and crowds all other ideas out of consciousness. Truly, this is something you can like print out, put on your wall and remember every day. Your focus is your greatest currency, is your superpower. By taking your focus into your own hands, you are taking back your power as the creator of your reality. Because whatever you focus on and persist in and whatever assumptions are infiltrating and replaying in your mind, that is the reality you're going to see reflected back to you. That is a law. Life is a manifestation of what you're predominantly focused on, even if it's subconscious and your awareness is not yet on it. What all of this is doing is just bringing it out of the subconscious, like we said, and making a conscious effort to choose what we're focusing on rather than just subconsciously allowing things to infiltrate into our minds without our conscious awareness on it. So I want you to reflect on and ask yourself the question, what is it in your reality that steals your focus from your bigger vision for your life, from your purpose, why you were sent here on this earth? You know that there are things you came here to do. You know that you have desires you want to see manifested. What are the things that are taking up mental space in your brain that you should not be focused on? Is it your phone? Is it other people? Is it t watching too much TV? Like what is taking up your time? What is taking up your focus? What are you infiltrating your mind with? You want to start becoming aware of it. Is it your thoughts, right? Thoughts are a huge one. We just think that our attention is being stolen from external people and sources. And it is, it, it very much is. But one of the silent stealers of our focus and attention is our very own thoughts. If we're alone with our thoughts so much, then we start creating movies. We start going down spirals and movies because we're not keeping ourselves focused or in movement and creating the life we desire. So naturally our, our minds will just go off on undesirable realities. And we just don't want to allow that to happen. I mean, it's going to happen at some point, but we don't want to allow it to drag on and then have that be the place that we're predominantly living in. Our minds are actually our biggest distraction. Our minds are our only limitation. So be very cautious about where are you focusing your mind. And then I want you to challenge yourself this week to actually choose something that you are choosing to consciously put your focus and attention into because you want to see that thing or that area grow. Okay, and then I also want you to choose one thing that when I asked you the question of what is it you think is stealing your focus from your biggest goal, what is something that comes up for you? Is it watching the news? Is it scrolling on Instagram, you TikTok? Is it allowing yourself to over ruminate on certain thought patterns? I just want you to choose one thing, one thing that you feel called to choose because whatever it is that you feel called to do, that's for a reason. It can be even so small. It can be like, I want to stop thinking that I'm ugly. Maybe you are someone who you want to attract physical beauty. I'm going to stop thinking that I'm unhealthy. I'm going to stop feeding that narrative and that story. So anytime that thought comes up this week that I'm unhealthy or I should be doing better this and that, nope, that I'm not putting my focus on that. I'm putting my focus on instead. How can I feel the healthiest I can feel? What can I focus on this week? Whether it's an action, whether it's an outcome you want to receive, but I want you to focus on feeling that way now. A lot of the times actions and thoughts go hand in hand because we end up embodying the person that we think we are anyway. So if you truly feel like you're the healthiest person, you're naturally going to do healthy things because our minds and bodies should be aligned in that way. So let me know in the comment section below what is that thing for you one thing you want to let go of focusing on one thing you want to call in and focus on more and really simplify it for yourself a lot of times we get overwhelmed by all the things we have to do because we got a billion tabs open right we got a billion things that are just taking our focus at one time but the key to focus is that we simplify things and we're very clear on what our focus is so that we can stay consistent with our focus and call in that desire
simplify your life to the now because that is when your life is always happening. Life is always happening in this moment. So what are you focusing on in this moment? All right, so I'm gonna leave you off with that. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you got so much value from it. If you did, please leave it a like and a comment letting me know what's the most valuable thing that you got out of this video. Let me know what is one thing you're letting go of, one thing you're calling in and focusing on and prioritizing and subscribe to the channel so you can see new videos from me weekly. Thanks for watching. Bye, I love you.